Okay. Well, hi, everybody. Good morning. My name is Troy Wilkinson, and I am the new owner of Pikesburg Coffee and Tea House up on North Academy. Um, I'll start out by saying if you would have came up and asked me a year ago today if I was going to be a small business owner, I probably would have given you a blank stare and asked what you're talking about. And that's because on the other side, I'm a petrol physicist. Um, <laughs> it's a geologist more specialized in for the last no, 12, 13 years um, at a college. I've been working for different oil and gas companies, and it was kind of a journey to get here. But I grew up in Kansas on a uh, small farm in western Kansas, sort of farming in a little town in uh, Pratt, Kansas. I uh, from there went to college at the University of Kansas, again, not really knowing what I wanted to do, and I took a geology course. Growing up in a little small town, I was a little up very been running around with no shoes and no shirt on anyways, around by pond, and geology just kind of fell into it. Uh, from there, right out of college, I went and worked for a major corporation, uh, they had used, and started my journey down the geology world. Bounced around in a few different companies and ended up as a petrophysicist. And after enough time doing that, the ups and downs of the oil and gas industry, it kind of got to a time um, where me and my wife said, Maybe this time, let's go do something else. You know, I have a very technical kind of mindset. I can, you know, maybe I want to be an analyst, a data analyst, or something somewhere. My wife has graduated nurse practitioner school. So, at the end of 2019, we decided, well, I'll be my nice corporation job, and you go find a job, and we'll leave. About three months later, in 2020, this little thing called COVID 19 hits, and we're still sitting in Oklahoma City going, oh no. Uh, Still didn't know really where we were going to go. She was still working. I knew 2020 was going to be a transition period for me anyways. Just didn't know really exactly what it was going to be like. Fast forward a couple months, she gets a job out in northern New Mexico. So we say, okay, let's go to northern New Mexico. We're locked down anyways. There's, but, you know, let's get the household, which we did. We moved out to northern New Mexico. And we're still there during 2020. Yeah, it's a blessing in disguise, I guess, because we really couldn't do anything anyways. And so we're hanging out there. Fast forward a few more months and it kind of gets to a point of something's got to do. We got to do something. You know, the geology world, I wanted to do some consulting and oil and gas at the time. Obviously, really wasn't there. Nobody was traveling. And started talking to some friends, you know, like, you know, maybe I should do my own thing. I've always loved the community. I personally am a person who just likes to go and hang out at a place and just talk. You know, talk a lot. I'm not a coffee connoisseur. I'm not. A tea connoisseur of any sort either. It was just maybe we should. Uh, I've, ran, I've ran multiple, you know, drilling rigs out in the middle of West Texas. Surely I can handle some employees. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of where it came about. Was all right. Well, maybe I'll start my own thing. Well, you're out there in New Mexico. Economics. And yeah, we'll just say it's New Mexico. Not a lot of growth in that area. Start talking to people, and okay, maybe I do one day. Cafe, I do some motorcycle riding on the time. I wanted to start a little moto cafe thing. Mm -hmm. Commercial espresso machines, commercial refrigerators. I don't know. Can we get it for you in six weeks? Might be six months. We don't know. Vaccines weren't talked about at the time. Talking to commercial real estate people, everybody was really can't talk to you. We don't want to do anything. Everybody was just taking a step back in general. And it goes, okay, well, I guess I'm not going to really open my own thing. Maybe let's go another route. A lot of times, you know, I start talking to some advisors and they're saying, well, maybe you can purchase a business. First thing that comes to mind, well, if you're going to purchase a business, it's probably a business that's not doing very well, right? No. Not exactly. My dad owned a business. Why did he walk away? He retired. You know, my mom had to take care of my entire childhood. She just got out of it because who wants some 10 kids running around here? <laughs> so, but at the same token, it was not everything means that it's failing. Um, so I started looking around. Colorado Springs, being from Oklahoma, Colorado was just a place we moved west, might have just been a cliche thing anyways, because it was, we just always go to Colorado, so we looked at it, was Sedona, Boise, Salt Lake City, you know, Montana, and Bozeman, there were different little shops that were kind of popping up, not exactly coffee shops, but that was the only other thing really outside of geology that I've never really been a part of, was we took cafes and shops when I was in college and high school, outside of working at my dad's John Deere store. And next thing you know, this Pikesburg Coffee and Tea House, Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs, you know, it's my pants live in Wichita, my wife's parents live in Oklahoma City. You can know, drive a distance if we needed to. Let's go check it out. Yeah, once COVID, it was about 50% capacity at the time, and I go in there for just to go check it out. I never met the owner, Mark, didn't know anything about it. I'm not from Colorado Springs. 
go in there, even though it was during the downtime. There's one person in here that was here every single time that I visited. Yeah. So, thank you, Frank. Because of that, though, was when I got in, it was, hey, Frank. Yeah. Hey, Danielle. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Hey, Tim. It was all of that when I got in there sitting down. And at the business that I was at, it, that's how I always kind of went to, was always other places instead of staying in the office. So that business, going in there and seeing people shaking hands and really seeing and listening to what they're talking about, a lot of it was business, personal, whatever, but it was just why we call it the cheers of coffee shops. Yes. It, was, yes. it only took me a few times when I tested the coffee, perfect product, and after that, I just saw the community and what it was really like, and let's make a deal, and here I am. <laughs> So now we open up to 20 minutes question and answer. So please feel free to ask any question. Happy number one. So one thing I've been curious about, Troy, since I moved over is, because um, I was there before, I was I go there now, and I totally agree with saying the community is amazing, and it's why it's one of my favorite coffee shops. I've been curious how you've been making decisions in terms of what you're going to keep from the legacy, look, feel, whatnot, versus how you're integrating your own stuff into it as well. You. I've, I've honestly been asking people what they want. I mean, there was, you know, one Diet Coke, for example. I had five different people. Hey, you like your Pepsi products? Diet Coke. <laughs> sure, that's, that's what you want. More healthy options, I'm actually. That right after this, I'm going because we have some new menu options coming out just because people sure they might eat everything gluten free, everything more vegan. So those kind of options. I'm curious, I asked about that one. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> like, that, I've just been listening. Yeah. I've worked in my own little cafes, but I didn't know them. So, in my mind, for a community feel, I want the community to be there. That's why it's there. It's listen to what you want. Yeah. So that, that's kind of how I've been making my decision so far. Yeah. yeah. So we kind of joked about it, but taking care of guys on the Texas oil rig sure. versus employees. Talk us through that learning curve for you. <clears throat> Out there, I can yell a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, it's not really that. My employees, which was another thing that was awesome coming into it, was I really incorporated some new ones, you know, and that's another thing I wanted to say about being this entrepreneur is I took it, I think in my sense, on a much easier level than I think a lot of you had because I just kind of bought into something that was a turnkey operation. So kudos to you guys that are out there starting from ground zero. I tried even barely going that route. Sure, it was a difficult time, but yeah, I had to throw in the towel at some point. Um, but to go back to your answer, um, to your question, it, it's just a different. It's just a different workforce, I guess you can say. Um, gentler, I guess, more gentle. Um, it's just, a, but it, it is. It those has those problems where we were all there at one point. We were 18, 19 years old. We wants to go to a coffee shop, and so you know, it's at six o'clock in the morning. Right. It's Friday, Saturday night. So we're, all there all day, so we're getting phone calls on Sunday mornings. I'm sick, kind of thing. That that. But other than that, it's, it's really great. A lot of them are locals. A lot of them. Do shop for a while as well so that also helps when they see the faces yeah. but my thing for them especially is we're a place for the customers we're not a place of efficiency we're talking about so it's been a more difficult transition than I thought it was going to be but it's it's, it's great so far I guess you can say I want to get him he's been raising his food. so you take it over a place with a great culture people love it there they love the culture they love the new owners typically want to change everything sure. Um, are you putting a different brand on it, a different culture, and continuing it? How do you not put mm -hmm. the work into it to change it? When I went around when I first came here, I went out. Whenever I went, um, when I first came here, I went out. When I went to the shop, I went out to other places, and you know, I just even though we really couldn't sit close. Hey, what do you know about Pikes Perk? Oh, that place is awesome. That place is great. So when you hear these things in the community, and you know, talking to the old owner as well, it sounds like from his previous ownership, he really worked out a lot of those kinks. So like I said, I kind of did fall into a turnkey operation. But Pikes Perk is a, a stable here. I don't want to change that. That's kind of why I kind of bought into it. Pikes Perk, Pikes Perk. I, I, I just loved everything about it. The community and all the people talking about it. That's, you know, I, I don't want to really get the wheel. You know, I like, you know, even the food, for example. I, the coffee was a big thing, which was great. I went in there with a cup of coffee. Shot of espresso, and, uh, you know, if you had that product, you know, that'd be a little different, but it's really good. And so, it's, 
anak aku lu lu cek juga aku aku lu kan ya so uh, you buy this as an existing business how did you find it if you talk to talk to me what do you look to buy a business and that kind of process bizbuysell.com b-i-z b-u-y-s-c bizbuysell.com when you see the website, when you see the name of it, it's something that throws me off, the wording, whatever. I had a, a buddy of mine who's advisor, he's like, you know, I bought a couple places off there, he's like, I don't think I've done my laundromat. Like, what are you talking about? It's one of the largest growers for businesses that are available. You go to Biz Buy Sale right now, Colorado Springs, you'll find one. There's, I saw the other day, there's another coffee shop that's for uh, sale. There's laundry franchises, whatever you want. It was, it was, I literally, I went on there, you know, it's one of these request to quote. Clicked on it, got an email from a real human, come to find out it's, it's a real website. Hey, they didn't anything, they just got me in touch with the broker. Um, and that's how I met Mark, and that's how we went forward. But yeah, bizbuysell.com. That, that, it, it was literally request the um, kind of you know confidential information, all the disclosures. I went to, that's how every, every shop that I found, that's the only place I went and looked, and I went and traveled. Sedona was another one, Salt Lake City, Boise, and Bozeman, those were all, and I found them all on there, I traveled to each one, and uh, checked them out, and Colorado Springs is by far the most, the best one, yeah. Yes. Yes! Yep. <laughs> Did you have a, yes? Yeah, so going back to the culture and the employee thing, so you walked into a great culture, yeah. you walked into a, probably a great team, but you also walked into COVID and navigating global restrictions, and then on top of that, a deficit in the workforce. Oh, yeah. How has that impacted you? So, I knew I was going to purchase it probably around, you know, we kind of came up with the conclusion maybe September, October ish of last year. This was 50% restriction. You know, I was going, okay, vaccines weren't talked about. There had to be an up at some point. There was going to be new, or I, had a, I just had the faith that it was going to go away some way, shape, or form. Vaccines were just. Sure, you know, I, you know, science brain going, okay, you other scientists, you got, I study rocks, you study these, you, you figure that out. <laughs> and that's kind of how it was. I had it, it, you know, crap, get out of the pocket. Kind of and it was, and it was sitting there going, okay, if Alvin's businesses, and it's probably a fairly unfortunate thing for a lot of them that did go up for sale because of COVID. And, you know, for people that were wanting to get into it, it might have been a benefit just for price points, right? Um, 50%, 25%, I'm sitting in northern New Mexico. December 1st, we're closing back down to 0%. That's my closing date. Oh. So, it, what are you going to do? You know, and I think just that, I think that kind of grind of growing up around, you know, just kind of, you know, that farm as a kid, you just kind of got to dig your heels in. What are you going to do about it? You know, you've already in, you got to do something about it. So, all right, very, very first thing the day that I took over, I went and put all my work got to run about that day, online ordering, and maybe it all, and it did, it helped out quite a bit, had a couple of hiccups at the beginning, but it wasn't in place beforehand, rebuilt the website, right, like, right out of the gate, so people could go to online ordering if they needed to, it helped out, so after that first month, we didn't have customers in, but I just saw a lot of you, and a lot of your faces, like, you see, I saw you come in, thank you, and then right after that, it was 25%, and then we just kind of grew from there, so as far as that was, it was, it just dig your heels in, and do with what you can. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I, like, what do I know that I could at least help? What do I do on the outside that I help? I, I do all my work. First thing I could do, and other than that, just, I didn't need anywhere else but other long places kind of the thing. And as far as the employees are concerned, baristas, I haven't had an issue with. It's kind of a niche, I feel, rather than maybe a regular server, you would say. And that's where I think a lot of the downfall is, maybe back of the house for the restaurants. Fortunately, Baristas, and it was summertime. Kind of right now, we're coming out of summertime. It's really when this uh, opening began, so summer employees have helped. But I uh, haven't really had too much issue with the labor shortage, to be honest, just because of baristas and priests are kind of a specialty, I guess, if you want to say, in a sense. So, so far, it's definitely had its ups and downs. We're out of it, we're past it. I'll just not look at the bank statements from the months before. I'm just going to ignore everything. But no, it's. It's awesome. I, I feel like we're back. I feel like we're, we're rolling. So and we're live music event, by the way, first time. This yeah. is. So, yeah.
Nice. What's up, Frank? What's <laughs> up? I really appreciate the fact that, first of all, you were smart enough to recognize that there's been a brand built already and, and not go in and try to flip that brand or change it. And the uh, second point of the problem I have for you is that what are you, you looking at? Maybe uh, now that we're uh, back in force and people are able to come, what are you looking at next year, two years, three years down the road? Do you have any vision for uh, an uptick of what you're doing in the business? Or what do you think? You know, and, and because of that brand, like you brought up, Pikesburg, I mean, I know Pikesburg used to be around here in town, and there used to be a few of them. Yeah. Let's say there can't be a few of them again. Yes. Why not? Yes. I mean, we have a good coffee. Our coffee's locally roasted from Pikes Perk. You know, that's also a possible future opportunity as well. Um, and that growth in the city, you know, the reason that I really wanted the place wasn't because I wanted a touristy shop. I mean, you come in almost every day. I mean, you see me almost every day, right? Rather, I'm either working or I'm just sitting behind the counter and, you know, doing stuff. I love talking to people. I really enjoy that. Communicate I'm just and even more so now, you know, and even more, you know, makes me so happy going in and seeing people talk. But from the business perspective, the the building that I was in, what I worked, they built a brand new building the last company I had. It was fancy. As a geologist, I need big walls, and we usually have magnetic walls in buildings, and then you can just throw maps up on the walls, and I need really long tables that I can lay out all my logs on. The CEO is not the CEO anymore. He has these little cowhide chairs and these small little round tables. Wanted to be all modern and nice. But there is a little coffee and tea house place right across the street, Pot Olive Pouchra. And they have these big, long tables, some of the, kind of the large, tall tables that I have at the shop. And that's where I've got it. Oh, where's Troy? You probably have to do some work service to the coffee shop instead. But while I was there, the business, there was a big business meeting place. There was a kind of a business corridor where the big office was at. So, oh, look at that. Who wants to work in the hall? Not me, at least. I don't want to sit in this little small office and shake your hand and talk. I just want something about chirping in the background. And, there's just something about being out in the environment. So that's why I love about Pikesburg. I want more places like that. We're on the north side, but the businesses are all over the city. So let's open another, what I consider like a, a more of a business and networking spot, more so than just a coffee shop. You know, that's, that's kind of what I want for you. Come in and enjoy a cup of coffee with your headphones on and sit at your computer. You can get that experience. But probably the places you can probably go to, to be honest, my place, you got. It's loud. It's, it's, it's not. Fun. It's yeah. It's not. A, yeah. It's not just your what I would consider your stereotypical, just small. You're just hearing glasses, kind of a clean place. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to. I want to grow it. To be honest, I want to. I want to bring back the Pikesburg name. You know, Rick. He had the roaster and had all of the shops. And he still has the roaster, but I'm not going anywhere right now. I like this place. So. Yeah. And you? Yeah, so uh, like you said about keeping the brand the same, but if the previous owner had stores, why is there one store now, and keeping that same brand, I'm not saying you should change the brand, I don't, I don't know if that's the case. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see yourself, like, growing back those uh, other locations? Yeah, so, the, kind of how the story goes is, he had a coffee roaster, and he owned multiple shops, even like the Perk downtown, that Pikesburg, Pikesburg in the airport. Mm -hmm. um, he got rid of it because of the employees. <laughs> so like, he owns a coffee restaurant now. And he, he decided that he was going to split up the shops. That's and, awesome. and so it's more of a, it's more of a, it's not a contract, but we use his coffee, which is great. And we get it for a good price. And as long as we just kind of use that name. Uh, but like I said, in my future, there's talks going on of that. And then if I can have that, then I can have all the things that I want. But he's not opposed. He's not a guy. It's not really a franchise. Airport one's owned differently. Pikes Peak Mountain Shadows is owned differently, and I own this one. But he's not. I could open up another location and still use the names, but not that. But I want. You have a good question. I want to keep that. I don't want to change it. But in order to grow with the previous owner and stuff, it's what he got rid of. I'm see if maybe I can take it back. With my own spin on things. Yeah, it's like, exactly. it's a little more updated. You know, younger brain on it. I guess you can say. Yes. All right, just for everyone in here, so you bought a, a business. How did you fund that? Good question. Ooh, such an interesting question. I cash it. Yeah. 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 As, uh, it, yeah. At the time, I, that's how. And that was another thing with, you know, with 
of not being able to go through that. A lot of people, I think, go through it. I was fortunately just set up at the time to purchase my own place and cash flow it. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. No, that's it's difficult on businesses, and it probably reduces a lot of stress. Oh, yeah. If you're shut down and you don't have this debt obligation, it's like. That. Yeah, I mean, mine still ran. It's, it, yes, I'm very, very fortunate in that sense is that I didn't have to go through that route and make things, I'm guessing, a lot easier. Yeah, it was a mm -hmm. cash flow. Yes? Um, later down the road, would you be able to expand outside of Colorado Springs? Very local pipes perk, I feel, you know, might not, just the name itself might not work in other places, but if I had to work at one personally, yeah, I would love to have it up in the mountain town with a great view of pipes perk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Something like that, um, but probably maybe regionally, something very close, rather than, you know, Parker, Vermont, something to that extent, um, possibly. I'm definitely not opposed to the metro. Yeah. Well, I'll give you some kudos because one thing I always liked about Pikes Park, in addition to the community mm -hmm. feel that we've been talking about, is the fact that Mark can get out and walk around. And I appreciate that you do that too. Yeah. Because that is, I think, personally rare in some types of businesses here. Other coffee shops I go to, I don't see that as yeah. much, right? So I just always appreciated that because mm -hmm. it makes me feel like the owner actually cares about their people yeah. versus we're just a, a bill, right? I did, and I made it a point that it wasn't. Wherever we landed next, is that we had to be more involved in the community. We did a lot of stuff kind of back in Oklahoma City, you know, smaller volunteering, you know, meals on wheels and like a humane society stuff. But I, if we're going to be somewhere, it's kind of what reminds me of Oklahoma City. It's just got good people, good small businesses. I really wanted to be involved with it. So I didn't want to just get a place and walk away from it, you know. So I, I, I do enjoy seeing faces that I, I really do. Alrighty, so we have time for our super secret special question. Who would like to ask this question? <laughs> Mr. Franker. What can we, as an all Springs business community, do to help you or support you? Come in, bring somebody who hasn't been in before. You know, let me give you a place to have business. You know, let me have a place for you to network. You know, let me give you a place to enjoy a good cup of coffee, good food, and just a good conversation with other people, you know. So if you have somebody, where do you want to go? You know, let's go grab a cup somewhere. I'm going to store a couple with the cat, and you know, I'm going to have a good large space. It's a, you need a business meeting, you don't want to do it in office, come on up. I have a conference room that we block off for you. You know, we have a separate room, you have video calls in there, you have Zoom meetings, you know, we have full TV, we have separate speakers. I mean, yeah. So if I guess to answer that, yeah, come in and bring people who want to get a cup of a good conversation. Nice. 